to write function um, as a composite of two or more functions. So now that we've made functions, they want us to take functions apart <laughs> and write them as composition. So on these examples, it says two or more functions. All of these can be made up with just two. Um, when it says non-identity, that means you can't just say f of x is x and, and g of x is the square root of 2x minus 3 is what they're saying. f of x equals plain x can't be one of your functions you're using. When you look at a problem like this and you say, okay, where could it have come from? You want to look for anything big that happened to the function or anything different. And notice something different or something big about this function is the fact that we have the square root of the entire thing. So I'm thinking that we took the square root of just a regular function. So the inside here can be my f of x. Let's let f of x be 2x minus 3. And g of x can be what happened to that f of x. What happened to it is we took the square root of it. Okay, so we can say that q of x is the composition f of g of x, where f of x is 2x minus 3, whoops, and g of x is the square root of x. Okay, so there we have given them two or two non-identity functions, and we have told them that would help us to make up that function. I'm just rewriting this because that was a little sloppy. And notice if we did that composition, whoops, excuse me, I put that backwards. If we did the function g of f of x, we would get exactly that. Okay, if we took f and plugged it into g, we would get the square root of 2x minus 3. So here is what our answer would look like. We're going to do g of f of x, where f of x is 2 minus 2x two minus 3 and g of x is the square root of x. Okay, here is another set. And we say, okay, what's something that happened to this function? Because we need an f of x, and we need a g of x. Okay, so we need two things that we could put together as a composite. Notice we have a fraction there, 3 over something. Okay. So I'm going to say that 3 over x, 3 over something, is one of my functions. And the other function is that something. The something that was there is x squared minus 2. Okay, so again, we're going to do g of f of x, because we took 3 over x and replaced the x with x squared minus 2 to get this function p of x. So g of f of x is what we found with our f of x being x squared minus 2 and our g of x being 3 over x. If we put those together as g of f of x, we would get that quantity p. Okay, so again, when you're doing these problems, you want to find something that maybe is different that's happening. And in this one, I would probably say the fact that there's absolute values there is something different. So notice we have the absolute value of a quantity and then minus 8. So that's what I'm going to make my g of x, the absolute value of a quantity x, minus 8. I'm going to make my f of x, that quantity that was inside, the 2x minus 5. And so now I've provided what I need. If I did g of f of x, Okay, notice if I did g of f of x, I would get exactly this. If I put the 2x minus 5 right there, I have my original function. So my answer is g of f of x with f of x being 2x minus 5 and g of x being absolute value of x minus 8. Okay, last example. Write the composition of this function. We have x cubed minus 4 squared plus 3. So we say maybe what's happening to a value. And notice we are taking this value here and 
squaring it. So how we get our two functions is what was the basically going on. We basically had a quantity squared plus 3, and it got more complicated when that quantity was x to the third minus 4. So there are our two values that can make up this function. Again, it's going to be g of f because we're taking g and replacing this value x with an x cubed minus 4. And our two values are f of x equals x cubed minus 4 and g of x, our two functions, excuse me, and g of x equals x squared plus 3. And that would be our answer.